Today I'm going to be giving you my long-term review on the Nikon 80-400mm to GED VR lens. I've had this lens for over five years. I'm going to be giving you some tips and hints on the way I like to use it. Today's review will not be the most technical orientated. More of a user experience review where I'll show you sample images I've taken from around the world in both stills and video over the last five years. When you get the lens, it comes in a nice sturdy box. You get a lot of booklets you'll never read, a lens hood, tripod collar, front and rear lens caps, and a really nicely designed protective lens case. This in comparison to most modern lenses where you get a soft pouch. Yeah, right. What happened there, Nikon? <laughs> Let's talk about some of the things I really love about this lens. First of all, it's big, but it's not that big as compared to something like your Nikon 200 to 500 mil lens, or say your Tamron 150 to 600 mil lens. This is, I guess, a good compromise if you're traveling. If you just want something that's still portable that you can get around, I just team it up here with my shoulder strap, with my D850. It just allows me to walk, you know, without breaking my back, that's the thing. You know, you don't want to walk away with this sore shoulder. The sharpness out of this lens, it is very good. You know, at 400 mil, even wide open, I get the sharpest results. And you can see that in some of my bird shots, wildlife shots. It's a fantastic all round lens. It is so versatile. And I guess if you needed one word to wrap up this lens, it is the fact that it's versatile. You can use this for you know, landscape. I've used it in landscape situations. You can use it for portrait. I've used this on corporate shoots, for sports, wildlife, you know, everything. The other thing is you get this really good lens hood on it. You know, some people don't like big lens hoods. I really do like a big lens hood because if you're shooting out in the weather, it really does help keep the rain off the lens and you're able to, you know, photograph things without having to continually wipe water off the front of your lens. Okay, so it goes all the way out. Very similar to the Sony 100 to 400 G Master lens. It's got that telescope type thing where it goes out and then it retracts back in. Okay, you do get some sort of dust and things like that every now and again into it. I shot with this on the beach recently. I got a little bit of sand, so I had that little bit of a scratchiness, but that is now gone. That sound has worked its way out. But other than that, you know, this lens accompanied with my 16 to 35 for doing mostly landscape, I'm covered. I really don't shoot things through the mid-range. Having a 16 to 35 and then having an 80 to 400 mil lens, that's all I need. The 80 to 400 mm lens has a variable aperture range between 4.5 and 5.6. And unlike a lot of other modern variable aperture lenses these days, has a more gradual minimum f-stop scale as you zoom in. It's not until you just get past the 250 mm mark that 5.6 kicks in. The other thing is it has a 77 mil filter holder. That's really good because that matches my 24 to 70, 70 to 200 and 16 to 35 mil Nikon lenses. Just means I don't have to mess around with different size filter rings. Just gonna quickly go through some of the buttons here on the side of the 80 to 400 mil lens. Up the top, you've got your auto and manual focus switch. You've then got your full and six meter to infinity button. Now I always leave mine on full because when you have it on full, that allows you to have a minimum focus distance of 1.75. So this lens can almost turn into a macro lens. So at 400 mil at 1.75, you can get in on those flowers, those leaves, all those little small minute details in nature. Down below that, we've got our 
very important VR button. I always have that switch to on unless I'm doing something else. So, you know, maybe I'm doing a long exposure landscape wise, but I'll have it off. But yeah, I leave that on. That gives me four stops of stabilization. That then allows me to drop my shutter speed down four stops and I'll still get a decent picture. Under that, we've got our normal and active button. I've always left that on active. And then you've got a lock switch here, which locks the lens into place for traveling so it won't move around. But the thing is, I have never used that lock switch. This always stays very firmly. I've seen other, you know, like 100 to 400 mil lenses and they've held the camera up like that. Lens has fallen down. This just doesn't do that, not at all. But it's that compromise where it's not massively big. It's not greatly small. It's not the lightest, but it's also not the heaviest. So you've got that nice compromise. And at the end of the day, I'm willing to meet that compromise because the images that I get out of this are stellar. They really are, you know, from landscape to wildlife, birds. I've always got such great results as this, especially when I've teamed it up with my Nikon D850. I don't miss anything like that 500 to 600 mil range because Having a 45 megapixel sensor on the D850 allows me to crop in on my shots. And I hardly miss any sort of image quality by cropping in. I've had this lens out in all types of weather, wind, rain, storms, snow, you name it. And it has never let me down. It's always given me sharp images, quick to acquire focus, and the fact that I can have it sitting on a second camera body in my camera bag, ready to grab some wildlife or close-up landscape shots is a real bonus. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the long-term view of the Nikon 80-400mm G ED VR lens. It's been a fantastic lens for me. I've traveled around the world with it and I've got some great images with it. As I always say, never stop creating and I'll see you next time.